All right, I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge with a swept back wing to go in there and try to clean up that bottom just a bit. Let's see what happens. Hi, y'all. Welcome back to my shop. In this series of, uh, of clips from past videos, I'm going to show you some uh, uh, flubs, uh, re retakes, and, and, and bloopers. I hope you find them entertaining, but more than that, I hope you learn something from them because when things happen, we need to we we, we want to learn from them. You know, they say a fool uh, learns from his own mistakes, but a wise man learns from others. So when something happens, try to figure out what what caused it and how to prevent it from happening again, and persevere. Sometimes, as some of these clips show, you just got to try over and over and over again, and stuff happens, and it can happen to anybody. And accidents can happen in a blink of an eye, so always, always wear eye protection before you even get close to the lathe. Fortunately, well, looks like it broke off the tenon. So I think that's the end of the hollowing. All right, now I'm going to show you how we're going to we're going to mount this here, so we can clean up the bottom and change the bottom shape. My granddaughter Pepper was in the basement with me while I was filming this and I told her to be real quiet and she was but unbeknown to me she was insisting on getting into the the scene uh, and I was completely unaware of it and a little later she comes up and says Peepaw can we watch the movie so I loaded the file and looked at it and it's the first time I discovered it and I just I just thought it was so funny I I tend to think of events like this as uh, Easter eggs because they're just they're just so much fun finding them. This is uh, Osage Orange, a very tough wood. Well, that wasn't fun. Try that again. And I think I want to concave this this roof line in just the tiniest little bit. I'm just gonna brace this with my finger so it won't kick back and just slice into it from right there at the corner. Scraper would have probably worked better. <laughs> Scraper would have worked better. so close okay I have not done a good job of that I've, I've tapered it too much let's let, let's see if we can't jam it on with a little piece of uh, paper towel yep that'll hold it so all I need to do is take off this and finish it a little bit so we don't we're gonna take slight very light cuts very light cuts. Yeah. Switch into a little smaller detail gouge to assist me in making these very light cuts. Alright, let's put a little tongue all on this. Make this fit a little bit a little bit snugger. I think that'll that'll probably hold it then. Makes those wood fibers swell just a little bit. Okay. Give this a moment. Support this just a little bit, one finger. I'm going to make this just a bit smaller. Let's 
that in toward the, toward the tail stock instead of away from it. This is what happens. You just gotta take your time. I got a nice clean cut, just to get a little bit little bit deeper. And I think I'm going to switch to a skew. I just I really like that detail, so I just want a really sharp defining cut there. I'm gonna pay the price for it. got that cut, I've got that. Now I'm just going to take just a little bit off the end there. Finger around here, just brace this just a bit. Whew. Fingers getting hot. Let me get a little more moisture on here. A little bit more moisture on both sides of the wood so that both sets of fibers will swell. I think we'll be all right. All right. Okay. Let's try one more time. Get this nice smooth cut I want here. sure how many times this has come off. <coughs> Hopefully this will be the last one. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to fold those ears out of the way. I'll show you how we're going to handle that a little bit later, but right now we're just going to we're just gonna fold them back out of the way. That's, that's how I solved my problem of putting the ears on at the wrong time. Okay. Okay. So we're just gonna simply cut down the spear. This side. Right around. Yep. You know, it'd help if I. I never. I always have a hard time orienting my tape so it doesn't unfold on me. Let's try again. Yeah. You can take these small scraps, ingrain scraps, and you could use it. For example, a small bowl. Uh, let me show you how to how to free those up. Basically, you're going to take it and just. Well, let me show you with this. Uh, before I get into that, this piece of wood is actually, I believe, a piece of uh, a poplar. And to free it up, normally you can just tap on the side of your chuck, and it'll just pop right out. Normally. <laughs> but when it doesn't, uh, here's the other other great uh, tip let me show you when you do make one of these first of all if I wanted to make this go away I could turn this down uh, but then that would sacrifice that that chuck for future use so the other way is when you do make them sometimes it's handy to have a uh, a little hole in it that you can put a, a rod in 
I'll probably scratch the bowl, but that'd be all right. Uh, put this little pin in it and just tap it, and, and out it comes, and it didn't do any damage to the to the bowl. Okay, here's a shot of my completed urn. It doesn't have any finish on it, although the top's got one coat of uh, Minwax Antique Oil, my favorite finish. And it's looking pretty good. There's only one problem. I came down to my shop today, and you can see it just split wide open. So, I think the lessons learned, let me see if I can focus in on, on this a little bit. I did not make the bottom a uniform thickness. It was too thick and too heavy, which tended to force the split. I should have controlled the drying a little bit more before I put the uh, collar in. I think what happened, maybe the collar, that might have been the coup de grace, started shrinking a little bit at the, at the collar. So, back to the drawing board. Now, we're going to pick up this cut on the tail and go straight in. We've got to be careful not to open it up too much we're going to hit that wing when it comes back around so kind of keep that in mind but again here's the bevel we're going to go in perpendicular to the wood and actually swing it the handle a little bit to our right watching that ghost image as to where to enter it swing the handle to the right Good. Tip that tool doesn't hit doesn't hit the tail from the line. And if you're careless, that's what happens. I've done several of these uh, blooper videos and I put them in a playlist so if you want to see some of the others you know click, click right here. I value your comments so if you got any comment please leave it below. Y'all stay safe come on back here.